Ooh, happy Halloween. So, tough decisions today. I wanted to be Batman, but I couldn't find my mask. So I knew I had this Elsa outfit, but I gave the wig to a little girl who loved Elsa because it was amazing. And I didn't realize I might need it. So um, my daughter has a wig wall. She likes to do this stuff called cosplay with her friends. And so I found this wig. So I thought what I'll do is I'll be, on I'll be Anna from Frozen, but because my sister's not home, I'll borrow her outfit because sisters do do stuff like that. So I'm Anna dressed as Elsa. What are you today? Please include a picture if you have one. Put it on the wall so everyone can see you. Okay, so um, it's Happy Halloween. March 31st is not usually the day we celebrate, but we're going to start with um, a book called Trick or Treat. It's Halloween. Oh, the wig's about to fall off my head. I can feel it shrinking. Um, it's by Linda Lowry and Richard Keep. So usually that means Linda Lowry would have been the author and Richard Keep would have been the illustrator because they usually put the author's name first. But um, sometimes you'll find a book that just has one name on it and that means they wrote the words and did the pictures. Oh my goodness, and Anna is having a bad hair date, isn't she? And all the hair salons are closed, so that's probably why. Okay, okay. Olaf, how do I look? Really good, okay. Uh, trick or treat, it's Halloween. Ooh, I love Halloween. Oh, apples dunked in caramel goo. Mmm, caramel apples. Bats out playing peekaboo. Cats come creeping black and lean. Oh my gosh, it's Halloween. Darkness brings the bone white stars. Earthlings dress like men from Mars. Faces turn to gooey green. Grab a mask, it's Halloween. I'm not supposed to touch my face. Ghosts and goblins arm in arm. Home becomes a pumpkin farm. Imps and critters watch and wait. Jack-o'-lanterns guard the gate. I have a couple of friends named Jack. Kids paint bags for candy treats. Do you paint your own bag? We always used to use pillowcases. Lanterns light up spooky streets. <laughs> Mommies rise from the ravine. Out you go. It's Halloween. Night winds wail through neighborhoods. Owls keep watch from haunted woods. Pirates swagger, panthers prowl. Queens parade and werewolves howl. Ravens dive for pumpkin seeds. A raven is a very dark black bird. Skeletons skulk through the weeds. Ooh. Maybe it would have been better to do this story at night. Tales are told of spooks unseen. Boo! Beware. It's Halloween. Urchins begging by the bunch.
Vampire Sipping Crimson Punch. Witches Offer Broomstick Rides. That's pretty nice. X Marks Where Treasures Hide. Yikes! A yawning, sleeping head. Zombies zigzag, zigzag home to bed. Will your creepy face come clean? Trick or treat, it's Halloween. Whoa. So that was a good book. Um, most of my books are at my schools. Oh, I just caught at the end of this book. Oh, it tells us a bit about Linda Lowry and Richard Keep, who are the author and illustrator here. It says they're married and they live on a pumpkin farm in Boulder, Colorado. That's in the United States with their son, Chris, and their furry faced cat, Max. Linda has written children's books for 20 years and Rick has taught high school art for just as long. Rick had a great time cutting and pasting the menagerie of monsters in this book since Halloween is his favorite hol ho holiday. Linda's favorite part of Halloween is the extra candy left in the treat bowl at the end of the night. What is your favorite part of Halloween? If you're going to add a picture to the page of you dressed up today, please include your favorite part of Halloween. And now that I read that about how Richard did the pictures, I see that they are not drawn pictures. What he did was he made the pictures by cutting out paper. That's pretty cool. Um, if you know Eric Carl, the author illustrator, he does like the very hungry caterpillar and all that. He does that, but first he designs and paints his paper before he cuts them out. Maybe we'll do an Eric Carl day. It just depends what books I have here because most of my books are at school one of my schools. So I want to, this one picture. So see how these ghosts and goblins are all attached. That is actually kind of easy peasy to do. So I'll show you how we can do that. And maybe you can add it to your window or something. I also don't have a whole lot of colored paper here because I didn't know we were going to be off school for so long. So I have some orange paper here. Um, it's a bit too high, so I'm going to cut it in half. And so here's what you can do. You can fold the paper back and forth. First, you want to make sure you know how many pieces will evenly fold into it. So first, you're going to fold it once depending how long your paper is. And then again. Okay, so now that I have four equal size pieces, I'm going to fold one way, then the other way. And I have all of these now looks like one piece of paper. So I wanna make a string of pumpkins, just like that string of goblins and ghosts. So all I need to remember is, as long as the folds of the paper are all on the sides, all I need to remember is to leave a little bit of paper still attached as I cut out my design. So maybe I'll draw first. So I have this really nice clipboard that my buddy uh, uh, Lachlan got me at Christmas. So I'm gonna hold that in its place and I'm going to draw a pumpkin, but I'm gonna remember that I cannot cut the sides. So when I draw the design, that I'm going to cut out. I'm going to not do anything here so that part stays together. So I like to use scissors because I learned when I was younger so I'm not worried about using scissors. Um, so I can cut out that part. I'm going to leave these sides joined and then I'm going to cut out the shape of a pumpkin and I'm going to leave that side. It's kind of crooked but you know what? Pumpkins are part of nature, and nothing in nature is perfect, so not even us. So I'm going to do that, and I'm going to put the little marks that, that the pumpkins have to make 
it look more real. And I think I'm going to turn my pumpkin into a jack-o'-lantern. So I really like shapes, so I'll probably use triangles for eyes. I probably draw pumpkins more than most grown-ups do. I don't know why I really like drawing pumpkins. So. so he's got some triangle eyes, and I think I'll give him an upside-down triangle nose. Now the mouth. Oh, I think I'll give him one tooth because a lot of the kids I know are missing teeth. Like, they're really excited when their teeth fall out. Spoiler alert, when you're a grown-up, you don't get excited when your teeth fall out. Because first of all, no one gives you money. It actually costs money. And secondly, they don't grow back. So I'm going to give this guy one little front tooth. Oops. Yes, he's cute. Okay. How does he look? Is he adorable? So I've clipped him in place. So now I can take this off and I'm just going to cut around the black lines that I drew and hopefully not lose a digit. Ta-da! It's easier if I look at it. Do you see the paper fly? Yes, this is my mess, my dining room. And um, it's kind of my craft area, to be honest. So as long as I don't cut the sides, look what's going to happen. Ooh. Now I have four pumpkins. See, I can make a decoration. So I can give each one a different face or I could make this one my husband and this one me and this one my son and this one my daughter. I can do anything actually because it's mine and there's no right and wrong with art. So that's a fun activity to do. And of course, you can use white paper and just color it yellow. Or you could do this with white paper and make little Frankenstein faces or bats. Bats would be fun. So that's one thing. Another thing is I'm finding I have to be very resourceful. And if you don't know what that word means, that word means sometimes you can't have things that you really need. So you have to kind of use other things to fill in for them or use your imagination to try and figure out what else could work to do those in things with. So I wanted a paper that wasn't white. I wanted a darker paper. I didn't really care what color, but I wanted to do this other craft. So I had this duotang and um, it's like a paper folder, right? Cardboard. And um, it was just holding teacher papers that I sometimes would take out to photocopy. I keep them in a duotank so I know where they are. But I thought, really, Mrs. Robinson, do you really need a back on that duotank? No, no, you do not. So I just ripped the back off. So this was a duotank cover, but now it's going to be a beautiful work of art. So what we're going to do is we're going to make, we're going to do some kissing art, okay? Ew! Everyone always says, ew! No, not that kind of kissing. This is fun. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a spider web. And making a spider web is kind of like cutting a pizza, but not as delicious. So what you want to do is put a line down this way and a line across. So I'm going to look down to do that. A line down this way. You can use a ruler if you want. But remember, spiders don't use rulers. So if it's not perfectly straight, it doesn't matter. And then like a pizza, you're going to cut corner to corner, okay? <laughs> okay, you like it? This is the first stage of the spider web. Now what you wanna do is you wanna take a letter U and stretch it out to make, make these connections here, okay? So it'll look like this. I'll go like this. See? And then you can do another set here. You can do more as well. I'm just going to do these for now. And see, when you bring it to the next line, you're kind of connecting it to the next one. So does that look like a spider web? <laughs> I think so. I'm happy with it. 
So here comes the kissing part. Eee, not that kind of kissing. So what you do is, and you do just little bits at a time. You get a glue stick and you just do little areas at a time. So I'm gonna just do this part. I'm gonna glue this line and I'm gonna glue this line and I'm gonna glue that line and I'm gonna glue that line. I don't wanna do it all cause it'll dry out. Mama mia. I had my cotton balls here. Mama. Where's my cotton balls? I had them right here. Oh, maybe I put them in my Halloween bag. Mm. Oh, come on. Oh, there it is. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wasn't that it? Mrs. Robinson, get organized. I thought I was organized. Oh my goodness, look, I just got a sticker on my hand. Good thing this isn't the bag I keep my shark teeth in. I would have got bitten. Mm. JB baby! I need a cotton ball. Can I pause this? I think I can pause this. Okay, I was sure I brought a cotton ball. But okay, I'm going to pause this and get a cotton ball. Can I do that? Oh, I can. Okay, okay, crisis averted. Someone just asked me the other day, why don't you do live videos? That's why I'm not organized enough. Okay, these are exactly where I left them. Okay, so my glue is probably not as wet as it should be. So I'm gonna try, I'm gonna do the other side. So I'm gonna run the glue along the spider web line that I drew. And I'm just gonna do this upper part for now. And now I'm gonna kiss the cotton ball to the paper and then pull it away. And I don't know if you can see, but the cotton is sticking in little strips now wherever I put the glue. So it looks dusty and cobwebby. Dusty cobwebby. Oh, this glue is still good. So if you look up close, it's fuzzy, fuzzy. So you do this all over all the black lines, then you could draw on some bugs. So you could put a spider in your spider web by just drawing like a black Easter egg. And who knows how many leg spiders have? Eight. So you can do four here and four on each side and I like to make them like a little little zigzag line I like to do that like but I've seen people just do sticks too I like it like this or if you collect a lot of junk at home you might have some plastic bugs like I do so I can glue those right on here you'll need a grown-up to help you because these you need a glue gun for. So it'll be pretty cool. So it takes a little bit of time because you have to like do all that, but it, it, it turns out nicely. So there we go. Now, the last thing we're gonna make today is a haunted graveyard. So this is kind of like when we did the um, fairy gardens, but we're going to make it haunted instead. So again, this is just a deli tray from a grocery store that apparently didn't wash up too well. So what I'm going to do is I have some black plasticine. Again, you can use rocks and sticks, right? Here's a nice big rock. But I have some black plasticine. And I'm going to make like a snake. Um, I got a black tray. So I'm going to do like a snake around part of the tray so I can stick stuff, like stick it into it. I even have an orange candle. Ooh. But remember, if you're using candles, you need to maybe figure out where would be a safe spot to use the candle so that you don't have anything hanging over it if you're going to light it. Not that you would ever light it anyway. It would be your grown up lighting it. So maybe let them have a vote in where you put it. So... I just put some black clay around here so that 
I could stand this guy up. His feet will stick into that. And he will guard the yard. Oh, 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 oh. Do you like him? So a cool thing that some of you may have at home are these zip ties. So I thought what I could do is I could use them as a fence sticks, like sticks for my haunted graveyard. But I want it to be thin because where do you see what I got? So I'm going to cut it real skinny at the end. Mm. Mamma mia. There. And where do you see these cool, cool beads I have for my kids at Halloween when we do pattern necklaces? Look at that bead. Oh, wouldn't that be cool in my graveyard? So I'm going to put that in here. So if I do a couple of these fence posts, um, and if you need any of these things, I do have lots. If you want to message me, I can wear gloves and put some in the mailbox. There's another one. Ooh. Scary. So this could be like a high fence around the graveyard. And then I'm going to use some of the pieces I cut off to be the crossboards on the fence. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try to not burn my finger off. But that could just add to the spookiness of it all if I do. Sometimes after I use a glue gun, I think I could go rob a bank because I'll have no fingerprints left. Okay. Come on. Oops. Okay, I got enough glue on that last one to build a hundred fences, I think. So a little bit of that glue there, that glue there. And it doesn't even me matter if it's not straight because like it's haunted, so. Oh yeah, I just, that's my glue gun falling on the floor. It almost had a severed thumb added. Um, so, Look how spooky this is already. Um, I can use my big rock because it takes up space. Oh, actually, look how cool that looks. Ooh. You know what? I could even glue some of these plastic bugs. Oh, that's a fly. I could actually add the fly to my spider web. Here's a spider. I think I'm going to add him onto the rock in the graveyard. just with a smidge of my thumb glued on for good luck. So there's my rock now. <laughs> Creepy. Okay, so it's coming along nicely. If you like scary things, I do, I do. So what else can I do? Hmm. <gasps> what if I took the rest of this cotton ball and kind of stretched it out like like cobwebs. Yes, I like that. And I can just drape that over my my fence there. Mrs. Robinson, you're outdoing yourself today. I don't know if Anna and Elsa would be into this kind of stuff, but I sure am. Ah, uh, what else? Oh, oh, oh. Oh, did I think to put it over here? So, sometimes when you're a crafty person, when you go places, you look at things and think, hey, I could use that for this craft or that craft. And now that I know I can pause this, I'm going to pause this. Okay. The other day I peeled some leaves to make the um, fairy gardens. So I kept the vine from the leaves. 
And I think that would be a nice haunted, um, like a little haunted tree because there's nothing on it. I could paint it black, but I'm not going to. But I'm going to make a little thing to stick it in so it'll stick. This is just plasticine. I'm going to plant it in there, stick it there, squish it down. And I have this stick that was outside. I'm going to put that across my yard, my graveyard. It's looking creepy. And I'm going to put my orange candle over here in the part that doesn't have any tall things hanging over it. And I think we should make some graveyard stuff. Some stuff. So, oh, I have a glow in the dark rock. I'm going to put that next to my candle. I think I'll put a few little rocks next to my candle just to keep them company. Um, oh, that tree's green. We don't want green. We want haunted. And then I have some yellow plasticine that I had bought at the dollar store for Jordy when she had that assignment for Mr. Wilson. So I'm going to pile some rocks. Ooh, I like it. I'll show you what it looks like in the end. Look at this, a little glow in the dark bug. Hmm, that should go on the rock as well. All right. Ooh, my rocks are getting creepy. So I think I will make a little grave marker. What I was looking for that I had bought, um, like teachers have to buy their own stuff for doing crafts. And I really like to do crafts, so I like to have a lot of stuff. So I go to garage sales and stuff in the summer, and I look for craft, I, things I can make crafts with. And so um, I had these two old silver crosses, like they were all dirty and tarnished, but I cut off the metal loop part, and I thought they would be really good for to put as grave markers in my graveyard, but I don't know where I put them. I'll probably find them once this is done. So I can make a little grave with some, some yellow here. And I can put R-I-P. I can use anything to put those letters in. I can just kind of scrape the letters in. I wonder if I use black marker if it would show, maybe. R, ooh, it's showing actually. I-P, ooh la lula. And not to be too scary, had one of these little get ghosts. I'll put that there. He can he can watch over that. So then I'm just gonna squish it to the <clears throat> the ghost was a little unsteady. He is no longer attached. Sorry, ghosty. Mm -hmm. I'll try that again. First I'll do the squishing, then I'll add the ghost. Then he might stay a little better. Okay, are you good? Okay, here's my, ooh, scary. I'm gonna move, oh, do you like it? And here's the little ghost. Tried to stick him in here, but he flew away as ghosts do. Ah, there we go. And guess what else I have? I use these for patterning. They're little candy bones. You can actually get plastic ones at the, um, the dollar store too, but if I look for some white bones, I can sprinkle them around too. Ooh, I hope this is scary enough for everybody. So there we go. Made a little haunted, little haunted graveyard there. Do you like it? So I hope you have some fun today pretending it's Halloween. I hope maybe someone even has candy for you. And uh, I can't wait to see you again. I'm going to give you a hint as to what we're going to do next time. No words, just this hint. Any ideas? Any ideas? All right. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.